For the purposes of this video, we will only be demonstrating how to use the Maddox Wing Test in order to measure deviations. In a clinical setting, the Maddox Wing is used in conjunction with a variety of other tests that are vital in establishing an evidence-based diagnosis. This will help the treatment and management of deviations. So, hey guys, it's Keith here, and today I'm joined by one of my good mates. Hi, I'm Ian. I'm his boy. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, what are we doing today? We are we're currently at the orthoptics clinic, um, waiting for my eyes to be checked. And so I got Min to come with me today to be my primary driver, because you know my eyes could be unfit to be driving, and you know, guys, safety is your number one priority. Okay. Um, so currently we're just we're just waiting for for my name to be called out before. Uh, before, oh, there we go. All right, guys, make sure to subscribe. Catch you later. Hi. Hello. Hey, come through. Hello. Just take a seat. Hi, how are you going? Good, thank you. Good. 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 The Maddox wing is a tool used primarily to measure the size of the deviation. It specifically measures heterophoria deviations as well as small heterotropias. Components of the Maddox wing. The retractable handle is found at the base of the instrument and this is where the patient holds the Maddox wing. The eyepieces where the patient looks into. The eyepiece lens holder used for patients who have difficulty seeing the board with their glasses. The septum and the plate that separates the right and left eye and their fields of view. The scale card which measures the horizontal, vertical and torsional deviations. The red arrow and red numbers that measure vertical deviations in prism diopters with odd numbers depicting hypo deviations and even numbers depicting hyper deviations. The white arrow and the white numbers that measure horizontal deviations in prism diopters with the odd numbers depicting ESO deviations and the even numbers depicting EXO deviations. The adjustable torsion lever which measures any cyclophoria present. Unlike vertical and horizontal deviations, Torsion is measured in degrees. If you hold it with your left hand, yep. that's okay. Nice. So holding that up to your eyes and looking through the eyepieces there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And holding it slightly down. Perfect. The patient is then asked to look through the eyepieces and to focus on the plate at the end of the Maddox wing. Things to consider before and during testing. Before the test, check the functions of the Maddox wing. Sometimes the septum is bent and may not cover the intended view, which can give inaccurate results. Ask the patient if they require bifocals. If yes, then use the eyepiece lens holder. The patient should hold the Maddox wing in a slightly depressed position at around 15 degrees and at reading distance. The arrows and numbers should be clearly seen by the patient, indicating relaxation of accommodation. If not, then incorrect measurements can be recorded. When asking the patient questions, make sure to consider the following. Because the white numbers on the Maddox wing are separated into even numbers depicting exodeviations and odd numbers depicting exodeviations, it is important to confirm with the patient what they are seeing. That is, the arrow they were asked about is actually pointing to a number specifically and not at the gap between the numbers. The same can be indicated for the red numbers, where even numbers depict hyper deviations and odd numbers depict hypo deviations. This is important as it will help distinguish between an ESO and an EXO deviation and also between a hyper and a hypo deviation and therefore the measurement of the deviation. It is important to note that dissociating the eyes may make the arrows drift. Time must be given for dissociation to take place and the number that is recorded is the number that the arrow is mostly pointing to. Interpretation. 
The view of the eyes are separated by the septum and the plate of the Maddox wing. When the patient looks at the eyepieces of the Maddox wing, the dissociation between the eyes will bring out the deviations. The right eye will see the arrows, and therefore this is projected onto the fovea of the right eye. The left eye will see the numbers, and therefore this is projected onto the fovea of the left eye. The torsion lever is essential to determine whether the patient has any torsional deviation. Lifting the lever up and above zero indicates the patient has an in cyclo deviation, and dragging the lever down and below zero indicates the patient has an ex cyclo deviation. Okay, so do we see the two arrows there, the red and the white arrow? Yep. Perfect. So what number is the white arrow pointing to? Uh, it's pointing to three. Oh, perfect. So it's at the three, it's not between the two and the four? Yep, it's at the three. Perfect. And now, just looking at that red arrow there, what number is that one pointing to? Uh, it's pointing to seven. Yep, at the seven, not between the six and yep, the eight? Yep, at the seven. Perfect. And I'll just grab you to move this lever here just until you think it is straight. Yep, there we go. Perfect. That's all done. I'll take that off you. Now for recording. MW indicates the test utilised, which in this case is the Maddox wing. SC or CC indicates whether the patient was wearing correction or not. SC meaning without correction and CC meaning with correction. EXO or ESO indicates the type of horizontal deviation. Right on left or left on right indicates the vertical deviation. Any torsion that was found is also recorded, remembering that torsion is always measured in degrees. Now back to Keith's case. The Maddox wing results show that he has an ESO deviation measuring at three prism diopters and a right on left, also known as a right hyper deviation measuring at seven prism diopters. The Maddox wing showed that he has zero degrees of torsion. Advantages of the Maddox wing include being able to measure the horizontal, vertical and torsional components of the deviation. It is a very time efficient method of measuring strabismus. It is a handheld instrument. It is not a difficult skill to learn and can be used on children. Disadvantages of the Maddox wing include it being limited in the type of deviation that can be measured. It cannot be used on patients with ARC or suppression. The dissociative nature of the test may cause irregularities in measurements. It cannot differentiate between a manifest or a latent deviation. And the septa is easily bent, therefore leading to incorrect results as one eye sees both arrows and numbers. Hey guys, uh, it's Keith here and I'm joined today by my boy Min. Min, give yourself an introduction. Yo, it's Min, it's his <laughs> boy, right here. Yep, uh, so today, um, <laughs> uh, it's Keith here and I'm joined today by my boy Min. Yo, it's Keith's boy here, Min, come at ya. <laughs> and we're just currently waiting for our names. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just look at the camera? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not supposed to look at the camera. <laughs>